gypsy moss is the foliating insect, so in terms of the physiology of the tree, the tree's losing leaf barrier, which means it photosynthesizes less, and it, it really defoliation acts as a stress on the tree. If you have a tree that's reasonably healthy, it will it can lose all the leaves early in the summer, and it will respond by producing a second set of buds. They come out about three weeks after the defoliation is over, and the tree gets through the winter. The problem is, is that when they have to tap into their stored energy to produce that second set of buds, that's a stress on them. They go through a number of weeks where they're not photosynthesizing because there's no leaves out there. That's a stress on them. As long as that's the only stress the trees have to deal with, they'll, they'll usually be fine. But if, if those trees are also drought stressed, or they're growing in compacted soil, or maybe they're diseased, maybe they're wounded. You know, you get two or three of these stresses and the trees basically just run out of energy. And that's when you see some trees start to die. Well, it's the caterpillars. The caterpillars do all the feeding. And in any given location, a caterpillar will get from the point of egg hatch to the point where it's finished its feeding and it's going to pupate, it takes that individual caterpillar about six weeks to do that. Little caterpillars just eat little bitty pieces of leaf. And even when they get a little bigger, they eat little holes in the leaf. And they actually figure that during the last stage of the caterpillar's life, if you want to think of it that way, about that last seven to ten days, that's when it eats 75% of all the foliage that it's going to eat. And, you know, those are big caterpillars and they take big chunks of leaves. Yeah, you can. Um, and in states that have gypsy moth well established do this on a regular basis every year. Uh, one thing is you, you look at what kinds of trees are around, what kind of forest do you live in, or what are the major shade trees. And if it's anything like oaks or birch or basswood, well, then you know you've got the right kind of host. And then the other thing you do is you look for egg masses. And gypsy moth egg masses are very distinctive. They, they're often on the trunk of the tree or on the undersides of big branches. And you can actually count the egg masses. You figure out how many egg masses there are on a per acre basis. And you can make some really good predictions about whether you're going to have a few gypsy moths that might be annoying but not that big a deal, or whether you're going to have a lot of defoliation. It depends. It depends on how healthy the mama gypsy moth is that lays that egg mass. If you have a vigorous, robust female moth, She'll lay an egg mass that's two or three inches long, and there may be a thousand, twelve hundred eggs in that egg mass, and chances are most of those eggs will hatch the following year. And what you want to do is, is treat that population maybe with pheromone flakes so that you totally disrupt the mating. In some cases, they use BT, they use multiple applications of BT to try to knock that population out as quickly as possible. The, the grids of pheromone traps that are deployed are what lead us to where the reproducing populations are. And simply catching a moth does not necessarily mean that you have a reproducing population established there. And in fact, th the way gypsy moth spreads Oftentimes, there'll be a founding population that just isn't large enough to uh, survive over time. And so just catching a single moth in a trap doesn't mean that you have a population there. And so that's why we, we put these grids of traps out, we catch something, then we go back in and put more traps out and try to delineate the area and confirm that there is actually a reproducing population there. Now it's all done on a GIS system, so they actually just give us that information via computer now. Then we can take that information and put it on an airplane, and it comes up on a moving map screen, a laptop computer screen, 
uh, in color on our in the airplane so we can see where the airplane is, where the block is that we're going to treat, and as we enter the block and it gives us direction back and forth on that block while we're actually in it. The GPS accuracy is plus or minus three feet. Um, it, it updates uh, 12 times a second. Uh, they're monitoring about 12 satellites. It's, a, it's not your basic uh, car GPS system. Pheromone flake applications, um, because it's an a actual flake that has no evaporation problems and is relatively large in size compared to a, a liquid spray, um, we're not really limited very much. They, they, we do mix it with the glue so it'll stick to the trees so they'd like it to be dry foliage or, or uh, at least um, not raining while we put it on. The flakes come in 55 gallon barrels that are all seal tagged. Each bag at this application rate has 250 acres worth of product. So we count out the bags and then they'll, they'll take those barrels to the other side while he goes ahead and loads those flakes in the gravity box in the hopper that actually holds the flakes. Um, in the bottom of that gravity box is the auger that's actually going to move those flakes back to the back end and the flakes get augered to the back end to the paddle wheel here. The glue comes in from the side so they get mixed together. You end up with this combination of uh, glue and flake slurry here to making sure that the actual application is individual flakes with a little bit of glue on each flake so they'll stick to the trees. When the traps are deployed, each of the states hire a lot of summer help to put these traps out. And in most cases, they're deployed on private land. And um, so it's very important if you're a property owner and somebody wants to deploy a gypsy moth trap or any kind of insect survey uh, uh, trap on your property to allow them access um, so that we can gather the data we need to determine what the spread rates are, where the populations are, and where we need to focus our efforts.